Hello and welcome to my sixth video of my Name for Beginners tutorial series, Parsing and Input. In the last video, I told you about type conversion and how to do it between compatible data types like integer and float. You can also do this with strings, if they have a number that could be an integer or a float. This kind of type conversion is called parsing. Parsing is analyzing a piece of information, usually a string, which has no meaning to the compiler, it's just some text. And then we try to extract useful parts from it that the computer can then work with. For example, this can be used to parse a string that holds a string representation of an equation into an actual one. For this video, we will do something easier. We will extract, parse some integers and floats from strings. Now, before we can do this, we must first import a module that contains the necessary procedures to do this. First off, what is a module? A module is basically a .nim file containing our code. So what we have written in the previous videos were all modules containing code. Importing a module means to add that module's code at the beginning of ours. Not all of it though, just the procedures we require. The compiler will handle what to take from the module based on what we will actually use from it. This is done with the following syntax structure. Evor import followed by module's name. Now the module we require to do string parsing is called strutels, which should be understood like this. str short for string plus utils short for utilities. Basically string stuff. Okay, let's import strutels now. Import strutels. By the way, since Visual Studio Code is giving us a yellow curved line under strutels, what that means is that we have imported strutels but not used it. It also happens for unused variables. Now let's compile and run this to see if it works. Okay, it works. Now let's make some variables to parse. Variable string integer is of string 100. Variable string float is of string string 0.25. Now we need two more variables to store the parse values from the first two string variables. So variable parsed integer, we give it such a name so we can understand what the variable is supposed to be as integer variable parsed float as float. Now, to parse a string into an integer and or float, we need to call a parsing procedure from the imported module's strutils and store whatever the result will be into one of the two variables we have just declared. Okay, let's parse. Parsed integer, this, this is where we will be parsing. And now we take the string integer and parse it. String integer, now we type dot parse integer. Now Visual Studio is not detecting any problems so this should work. Now we do this again for the float. Parsed float is string float dot parse float. We just name it float instead of integer with the parse. Okay let's display this and see if it works. Parsed integer. Let's put a comma in between. So we will, because we will be displaying its type as well, so if we, so that we know that it actually parsed from string version into the integer one. Let's just copy this whole line and put here parsed float, parsed float, and let's run this. Here we go. 100 is now an integer, 0 0.25 is now a float. Okay, let's use these two variables and calculate them and display them. Echo parsed integer plus parsed float. Now, this isn't gonna work because we gotta convert this one to float and now it will work. 100 100.25. Okay, let's comment out this entire code so it won't interfere with what we will write next. So far we have been making variables and giving them values manually. What if you wanted to give the program your own data while the program is running? This is called input. For this we will use a procedure called readLine, 
that will read the first line from the terminal after we press enter. The data will be of type string and we will store it inside a variable. Now let's use echo to tell the user to type something. Echo, type something. I have put parentheses around the argument of echo procedure to show you that so far we have been leaving them out, omitting them. Procedures are usually structured this way with parentheses. Some procedures need parentheses if the first argument of the procedure does not receive a variable. We can only append dot procedures name procedures if they require a variable as the first argument. If those procedures have another second argument, it must go into parentheses. Otherwise, the compiler cannot read it. There are even more ways of calling procedures, but that is the subject of a future video. Now let's make a variable and give it a value of read line with an argument of stdn. Variable data is read line stdn. This procedure will only read once when the variable is initialized and the user has pressed enter. So we don't need to use var here, we should use let instead. Argument stdn tells the procedure read line to read from the console terminal. I have put parentheses around the argument to show you this other way of calling procedures again. I will also show you how to do it the way we have been doing it so far. Read line procedures first argument takes a variable of type file based on which the procedure determines where to read from. In our case, the terminal console. Now let's echo this and run this. Data F6. Okay, it says type something string and it outputs it. The reason it outputs it twice is because the first one is what we typed and then press enter and the second one is the echo of the data. Now let's comment this line and let's call the procedure the way we have been doing it so far. The data is stdn. This is the variable that we want to apply this procedure to. Dot read line. And this will work again the same some text and again outputs it. You can call procedures in whichever way you want. Name provides a lot of freedom in many things so that you can, as a programmer, choose however you want to write your programs. There is no right or wrong, just personal preference. Now let's make it so that our program takes two inputs and calculates them. So we will write integer numbers in it. Okay, let's comment this out so it won't interfere with the next part. Now let's ask the user to type a number, first number. Now let's get some input. Let number one be stdn variable dot read line. Now we do this again for the second number. Let's copy and paste this. Second number, number two. Okay, let's parse the first number and store it in a new variable. Let parse number one equal number one that parse integer. It's not auto completing because we gotta import first. Import is true tells. Now this one works. Let's separate this. Now let's parse the second number. Let's do it directly without using two variables. We do this by calling appending dot parse integer after the read line like this. Parse integer. No need for two variables. Now let's calculate and display the values. Let sum be parsed number one, we use two variables here, plus number two. And let's echo. Okay, let's type 105 and there we go 105 okay that's it for this video thanks for watching if you had any problems with any part of the video let me know in the comment section the code for this video is in the link in the description have fun